All right, thank y'all for coming and letting me present this to you. Um, this is my signature project. Um, I started it like a couple years ago um, when I first started getting my master's. Um, and we had to pick a um, sort of like an issue or a problem going on at our school. And then we had to you know, do research and things like that and come up with some kind of improvement plan. Here we go. All right, the overall goal for my project is to determine the effectiveness of specialized instruction in a resource setting versus the effectiveness of an inclusive model of teaching in the general education classroom as it relates to special education students' achievement data. Um, and this information can potentially help my school choose the best instructional model to promote the success of special education students in the general education classroom. So that was my goal, to see which type of setting um, worked better for um, our SPED students as it relates to achievement data. All right, so the first steps I did was um, when I first started this project, I had to gather all of our data. Um, and I looked at our iReady, Global Scholar, well, Scantron, things like that data and compiled them from um, our secondary special education students. And then I did research like through scholarly journals and articles to read about um, uh, what science and the trends are saying about whether or not resource settings are the things that improve SPED achievement or if it's inclusive models. And then the third thing I did was to create a practical action plan to implement um, in the school system based off of the data and the research-based strategies. So. When I first got to this school back in 2017 or 16, we were all inclusive. We did not go, we did not pull kids out to do specialized services or anything. We didn't pull any kids out. So what we did was we were all inclusion and then we did that for two years and then we made a switch to just resource um, pullouts. And I was very interested in seeing which model did the best. All right, so this is uh, real data from our school, from our SPED students. Um, and I made this graphic. Let me get all the rest on there. All right, so in previous years, our school system promoted inclusion classrooms with a co-teaching model. And in current years, we've made the switch to provide specialized instruction in the resource room. And our data shows that students with special needs in either setting are still performing below grade level. It's very hit or miss. 77% of our SPED students are performing below grade level. Um, around 67% um, of special needs students are performing at least two grade levels below average in math, and 70% are performing at least two grade levels below average in reading. So that 5%, um, and this is based off of a sample of, you know, 50 kids. Um, and so something I noticed is if we just improve five children's scores, this number goes up dramatically. But that was my real question is why have we not shown progress in either setting? Um, and the questions that came to my mind were, was, was it because of the way we were doing inclusion? Um, were we pulling out at the wrong times? Things like that. My, my questions in my head were going crazy. All right, and here's just another graphic um, that I made. This is from 2017 to 2019. We had a huge drop. We go up, and then in uh, more current years, it continues to do the same model, up and down, up and down. All right, just uh, for some of y'all that don't know that do primarily general ed, um, the two learning environments that we have for special education students is the inclusive classroom, which is where everybody is taught in the same room. Um, and then we have differentiated instruction or a SPED teacher is in that room, or maybe a parapro is in that room with the general education teacher. And they collaborate to meet the individual needs of all the students while also following the IEP. The second setting would be um, where we pull out, the special education teacher pulls out of that general education classroom um, to provide that specialized instruction in a small group resource setting. 
and that still requires collaboration from general ed, special ed, um, to meet those needs as well. All right, so um, some articles that I read um, that I think were the most relevant to what, um, what our school's issue is. Um, this one was called Two Perspectives on Inclusion, and it basically suggested that our own opinions as teachers affects the way we teach students with disabilities. Our opinions about disabilities in general affect how we view those students and teach those students in our classroom, um, which um, sounds like common sense, but it makes a lot of sense. When I surveyed a good majority of our teachers, a lot of teachers had their own biases about students with disabilities and what that means in their room and how well they can learn. So that definitely affects how we teach those kids. Um, the second article that really um, aligned with what our school needs or what our school was lacking was this one and it suggested, it's called Meeting the Needs of Special Education Students in the Inclusive Classroom and it suggested that a lot of the general education teachers felt unprepared to meet the needs of their students in the classroom. Like if there's a diverse need or this kid needs this on this level, this kid is hearing impaired, this kid has ADD and needs to move, that there was just too much going on and they felt unprepared. Um, and that was a trend in our school as well um, with the surveys that I gave out. The last thing um, that really aligned with the issues that we had at our school based on teacher surveys was um, the lack of cohesiveness and roles. Um, when that special education teacher comes into your classroom, um, the roles and responsibilities of each teacher was not fully understood. Um, because, you know, the, the special education teacher is not just there to monitor or to take one small group, they're there to help co-teach. And so sometimes the roles were not clearly defined and that could have led to a decrease in achievement scores. So this article suggests that a larger role from the special education teacher in a, in a co-teaching classroom, the larger the role that the special education teacher has, the more impact it will have on student achievement. More so the more co-teaching that's going on instead of correct just that's Grabbing and that's a small group. Correct, and that's that's um, even more so than pull out. Um, this inclusive model with effective co-teaching is more successful, I believe, than even doing pull out services. So I really, this is this is my plan. So here at our school, and I sort of already said this earlier, we surveyed a lot of teachers. I found that many teachers only had a basic knowledge of the co-teaching models, um, like team teaching. Uh, pair teaching, um, station teaching, there's lots of different models and they very have, have very basic knowledge and they were, uh, didn't have a deep understanding of the roles of each teacher. It was more like, oh, you're here to watch my kids when I go to the bathroom or you're here to only deal with those two kids over there and that's not, that's not the case. I also noticed a trend in the lack of differentiation in the general education classrooms for all students, not just students with IEPs. I know a lot of times um, when I go into an inclusive classroom, there's one assignment that's posted on the uh, general education classroom and you know there's not a lot of differentiation for students with IEPs or 504s or anything. Um, there's not also enough opportunities for um, small group professional development that deals with differentiation. Um, so it's hard to increase that or improve on that when we don't have opportunities to train on the best ways to do it. All right, so based off of research, these are three techniques that all teachers can use in their classrooms to promote learning growth. This first one is the four M's. And it's just meaning that all lessons should be manageable, measurable, made first, and most important. The four M's. The lesson objective should be designed collaboratively with all the criteria in mind. That also includes IEP goals. I know our special education teachers, we uh, always make sure our goals are based off of like manageable, realistic, and measurable things. Um, that's how lessons should be. And that's how the work should be that's given out 
to everybody, and that will help differentiate. Format matters. You can differentiate by allowing students to respond in a format that communicates the worthiness of their ideas. This can maximize the student's learning potential, so don't get caught up in the way that you want them to do it versus the way they want to show that they learned it. Um, that's, a, that's a great way to differentiate. It doesn't just have to be in the instruction part. It can be in the assessment part. And then also in the classroom, you should create a culture of error, which um, means students feel safe to raise their hand and say a wrong answer and they're not made to feel any type of way about it. So um, they're able to make a mistake, discuss their mistake, so more time is focused on fixing the mistakes. Regardless of the learning environments, they need to feel comfortable in order to learn. So at our school, I believe that an inclusion model is gonna be the best way to help our kids succeed. So I was like, how would we take the inclusion model that we have now and sort of take it and accelerate it to be better. So first of all, we'd have to assess whether or not our school is ready to provide our special education instruction in a co-teaching inclusive model. All stakeholders must uh, be on board in order to create that culture of inclusion. It must be a school-wide belief and a common goal for everybody. We have to provide ongoing opportunities for all teachers for professional development and learning um, that teaches strategies for differentiation. We need to pair teachers together meaningfully that work together um, and purposefully in order to be the most efficient and effective in a co-teaching model. For example, um, if I wanted to be paired with one of the ninth and 10th grade math teachers, but I don't have a background in math, it might be smarter to pair somebody else with that teacher because they had a background in math. And so well, you can pair them thing, meaningfully. I'm sorry, I know oh, that one thing that we did here is Miss um, Blue and I worked, I don't have a strong background in math, but the first few weeks, she would always share her work ahead of time so that I could work through it and then literally work through it like a student does and she would show me so I would also know oh wait this is going to be a hard part so things like that that's right I know when I was paired with the upper level math teachers I'd go home and watch YouTube videos um, to figure out how we were going to do this the next day or how I could teach a different strategy. So just more um, meaningful pairings will work together like people that mesh well together and have the same common goals and that will help increase student achievement. And then non-judgmental and frequent evaluations of teachers, co-teachers, students and the relationship with the instructional content. We need um, the administrators or the facilitators of this, like the SPEC coordinator and everybody else, to monitor how we're doing this, to ask for proof of differentiation, to be able to see the differentiation in the classroom and the engagement and the relationships between the content and the teachers. So this is my plan. So this was my plan uh, for the beginning of the year. So there should be some kind of in-service. We always have in-service PDs. So during that in-service, we need to possibly provide a small group professional development session that focuses on differentiation and instructional strategies. We could also have one that focuses on the co-teaching models. Um, and we could even model that. We could even put forth a mock situation in which I'm the co-teacher and you're my co-teacher and we're gonna show you how it's done in the classroom because it's not, it's not too hard. And then we also need to look at data at those beginning meetings too, to see, to establish our baseline. Okay, okay, last year they were performing like this, when we did this, and that's how we're gonna do. Also, I would like to start a committee called the Differentiation and Improvement Committee, and we would assign a small group of teachers to be in that, and they don't have to be all special ed teachers, they could be general education teachers, I hope, as well on that committee. All right, by the end of the first nine weeks, I want to see lesson plans in order to gather evidence of differentiation. Um, that way we can uh, provide support for those that don't know how to do 
um, if a general education teacher or any teacher is struggling with how to show it or how to give it, we can offer them support. Um, we'd have maybe like a weekly faculty meeting in the afternoon um, when we have our weekly meetings on Mondays, maybe have a portion of that focused on um, our differentiation. Our superstar teachers can model the situation like, oh, well, this is what I do. And they can do a five minute little demonstration of what to do. We need to be monitored and observed using evaluation tools at least twice during the quarter meet with teachers to provide feedback on those observations and gather testing data from the beginning of the year for the differentiation and improvement committee to review. So that um, iReady achievement data that we take at the beginning of the year, we're gonna establish our baseline at the beginning. All right, at the end of the second nine weeks, so we're getting to the end of Christmas. So we're gonna collect lesson plans still, offer support, you know, take a portion of our meeting every week to like review this, say, does anybody feel like they had a, you know, the glow moment or the grow moment and on differentiation. Monitor again, meet with teachers, provide feedback, gather the middle of the year data. And then the committee, the DNI committee will review current SPED grades, work samples, the classroom tests they're taking, and achievement data to find trends and stuff from the first semester. Like we see, um, like many times, I know um, with a few of my kids, I see that they do awful on their classwork, but then they make 80s on tests. Why is that? Are they just not wanting to perform? Um, is it a motivation thing? Is it because the format of the work had to write a paper or had to fill out a chart and I didn't want to do that, but I know the content, so I'll just ace the test. So these are just little trends that we would want to figure out what's going on and if we can adjust our instructional strategies to meet those needs at that time. The third nine weeks, we're going to have a beginning of semester review. When we come back, we're going to um, review the data that we did in the second nine weeks. Um, we're going to have a small group PD session on the teacher work day that we have in January um, to present trends to everybody that we found. Um, we're going to collect lesson plans, provide support, focus on it on meetings. Um, maybe uh, if we have any new teachers come or uh, different teachers that have learned in the first term need to show off what they know, like maybe um, model what they did monitor and observe and meet with teachers to provide feedback still. So the constant monitoring, that's why I said it should be non-judgmental and um, frequent, is because it's not to say what you're doing wrong or to give tons of advice on how to fix what you're doing in the classroom. It's more like, let me offer you support that'll help these kids be more successful. All right, in the fourth nine weeks and end of the year, we're still gonna collect those lesson plans, talking about it in meetings, monitor and observe. Um, we're gonna gather that end of the year testing data from iReady, and then we're gonna present it from the whole year. The DNI committee will sit down and say, okay, this child showed this much growth. This child didn't show any growth. This child went up five points. And like I said, just a, just a small improvement in about five or six students. That's all it'll take for our numbers to drastically change from that first graphic um, and go more, way more in the green than in the red. Um, and then we can present it to the faculty, staff, and board representatives to show off our growth. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll say, well, look, what we've done to differentiate, what we've done to co-teach, what we've done in this inclusion model is working. All right, and those are references to my articles. Um, I appreciate y'all coming in and listening to me. Um, and if anybody needs, um, I'm going to speak for all the special ed teachers here, mm -hmm. um, but if any of the general ed teachers need an example of how to differentiate an exam or a test, um, they can always bring their test to us prior to the prior to them giving it and Absolutely. we can we can do some adjustments to it such as the things that we most commonly use with you know 
decreasing the answer choices or giving a word bank or you know shortening how many questions relate to one standard we'll be happy to help y'all do that if any of y'all would like us to and you know i'll be interested to see um after a couple more years of us doing these pull out models if it actually has made a difference in our most previous year's data um because i think just provide I, from doing all this research and thinking about this more in depth i've found that I think differentiation will help us regardless of the model we choose. Whether it's inclusive, that'll, which I think is always best, but if, if we are doing pullouts, it, just that differentiation in the general ed classroom and offering that support helps so much when those kids do get pulled out and get to come because their, their assignment's not exactly the same, in it, but they're still showing mastery of that standard. All right, that's it. Thank you, recorder. Thank you so much.